Hello, please give me 30 minutes of your time. Let me teach you how to make this beautiful baby umbrella frock. As in, it's so beautiful. All right, so I did my measurements pattern paper um hard net okay you need hard net for that ball effect for that full cloudy effect okay and i'm working with organza this organza material is so fine like look at that beauty okay so i'm working with this organza material i've been working with my underlay satin i'm working with um doll face satin as my underlay then i would also need um lining for it as well okay so we we'll just get into the drafting now i also need um this beautiful appliques to you know beautify this dress and you know give it a pop of color okay so this is nani your favorite um youtuber i love you thank you for joining me once again today so here on my pattern paper I will be drafting the basic bodies okay that, that's the upper part for your child and i'm working for a three year old here okay so i don't want to fold the fabric on the pattern paper on full because i'll be using the same pattern to cut the front and the back all right so first things first i'm going to mark out a uh, zip allowance for the back okay i'll be using one pattern to cut the front and the back saves you the stress saves you your pattern paper makes your work easy and faster okay so 1.5 inches for my zip allowance okay so that's what i'm marking from the edge of my pattern i'll connect that in a straight line okay like so then i would make a starting point just a guideline this is my zip allowance right okay so all my measurements would start after that mark that i made for the zip allowance the next thing i would make would be my starting point just a guideline to you know um give me a clue on where to start taking my measurements from so this upper line is now the shoulder line okay so what i'll do would be to mark the vertical measurements okay so the half length is 8.75 i'll add half inch um, seam allowance to attach the upper bodies to the lower part of the dress okay so this is 8.75 as my half length then seam allowance to attach the upper bodies to the lower bodies all right so the next thing would be to mark the shoulder width okay or your shoulder measurement whatever you have as a shoulder measurement divide that by two for me i have nine divided by two is 4.5 then the neck width i'm working with is 2.5 okay so the neck width is 2.5 the neck depth is also 2.5 and this is for the front and the back depth is one inch okay so one inch neck depth for the back 2.5 inches neck depth for the front and the neck width for both front and back is 2.5 okay so this is the front neckline and i'll go ahead and draft the back neckline like so okay so the back neckline will rest into the zip allowance right so uh, that is it now on the shoulder line i'm going to come down by half inch for the shoulder slope guys if you don't know for a child you don't do one inch you do half inch for a child okay so half inch shoulder slope i'll connect that to my neck width then from that half inch shoulder slope i'll mark the chest line which is derived by dividing the bust measurement by six plus two inches okay so whatever value you get to so mark that from the half inch um shoulder slope then also mark half of your shoulder measurement at that point to give you um the shape to make your armhole right so i'll connect the shoulder to the upper part like so okay so this becomes my chest line and from here i can start drafting now on this chest line okay after the zip allowance i'm going to mark the chest measurement divided by four okay it's the chest measurement here because the child doesn't have bust yet okay plus 1.5 inches seam allowance then on the half plane to measure the belly okay or the waist divided by four plus one 0.5 inches seam allowance and there will be no that for this because you know that are for shape or to just to give shape to your dress whatever you're making but the child of three year old doesn't really have that shape to you know bring out okay so for the armhole i'll measure what i have left from my shoulder line mark half of that at that point then come in by half inch 
right so i'm not going to connect that half inch to the upper part of the shoulder using the straight part of my ruler then using the curvy part of my ruler i'm going to connect from that half inch that i came inward by to where i marked the bust measurement plus the allowance so this gives me my armhole and like this now we are done with the upper part super easy guys okay so this is your front and your back pattern all in one okay it saves you stress energy pattern paper and your time all right so i'll just go ahead and cut this beautiful pattern out okay so in case you're wondering who is speaking this is nani your friend your teacher your anything you want me to be all right so i'll transfer this pattern to the doll face okay folding my doll face into two and place exactly what i have on my pattern like so then make sure that i get all the edges right okay then my zip allowance i would open that out okay so this is the back i also transfer this to my lining to my main fabric now to cut the front you, you then fold in your zip allowance like so you don't you can cut it out but i'll just fold it in okay then trim off the front neckline like so this is this is so we made easy you know you don't need to you know stress yourself okay so when i cut out the neckline i also fold my door face into two place the front pattern on it okay exactly the same way i placed the back just place it on it like so then make sure that all the points everywhere is intact then i'll cut it out okay you don't want to have any excess or any shortage so i'll go cut my front pattern and my back pattern i'll go cut it on the lining i'll cut it on the main um, organza that i'm working with and i'll also cut i'll cut two pieces for the lining okay i'll be using the satin as lining okay the satin is under leaf for the organza okay then you also need a lining piece so i'll cut two satin pieces pieces and one list right so for us to get the lower part the waist i'm working with is 21 remember we added zip allowance to the front zip allowance of 1.5 inches so left hand side of the back right hand side of the back that will give us three inches that's 1.5 times three times two is three inches so 21 plus three is 24 so 24 would be the waist measurement we'll be working with okay now to get our half circle flare or our 180 degree flare i'll divide 24 by 3.14 and that gives me 7.6 okay so 7.6 is the radius i'll be working with for this particular project okay so we'll keep that by the side right 7.6 is our radius now you want to know the length of the flare for the lower part so you measure the gown length or the dress length so for me the gown length is 26 inches i'll subtract the half length for it so remember the half length that i worked with is 8.75 so subtracting 26 from 8.75 whatever value i get would be the length of my flare so subtracting uh, 28 8.75 from 26 gave me 17.25 okay so we are working with 7.6 and 17.25 7.6 which is the radius and 17.25 which would be the length of the flare okay so i hope you understand this please any confusion i'm right there in the comment section hit me up okay and i'll make sure i answer even if you don't get it clear you'll be um, you come to my whatsapp and i'll explain properly now we have 17.25 now i'll be drafting directly on my satin so the satin is supposed to be shorter than the main fabric so i'll take out two inches from that so that gives me 15.25 now note on the main fabric which is the organza i'll be using this my 17.25 but for the satin which is the underlay i'll be subtracting two inches from that so that give me 15.25 then i'll add one inch to that because i'll need half inch to join this the flare to the upper part then half inch for overlocking the edges of my flare okay the lower part of my flare so we have two figures 7.6 which is the radius sorry so 7.6 okay then 16.25 which is the flare length okay so these are the um figures that we'll be working with 
right okay so i hope you understand clearly okay just little mathematics please they don't get confused here yeah? uh -huh. right so i'll then show you how to fold to cut your half circle flare or your 180 degree flare now i'm working with one yard of fabric okay one yard of um satin of doll face satin so i'll fold into two okay i'll fold into two like so okay i'll fold into two along the length you know it's by 60. okay so i'll fold into two along the length that means what i folded will be 30 inches okay then i'll also fold diagonally like in form of a bias like the way we fold on bias like so okay so this is how you fold like so so i'll then make turn it so that the folded edge will be facing me okay so we have one open side and one folded side towards the camera okay so i'm going to cut out that excess around there so when you're cutting you make sure not to cut the folded part because that folded part is your center front and the open part is your center back where you'll be attaching your zip okay i hope you get the drift there all right so i just want to cut out that excess fabric so that it doesn't get in the way of our cutting so that you understand properly so right here i have my working fabric with me now okay so this is it so remember we have two figures the radius and the length of the flare okay so we're going to be working with these two figures now the radius is 7.6 the length of the flare is 16.25 so from the top okay that pointy edge of the fabric i'm going to max uh, max 7.6 i'll be taking it round 7.6 like so 7.6 then whatever value i get i'll connect it all the way round like so okay i hope you get then after this i'll just go and cut it out okay so that is the waste for this dress okay so the next now do will be to cut out and remember we have the flare length of 16.25 okay so to not confuse you i'll cut out the 7.6 radius then we'll focus on the next thing to do which is the um flare length so you can see i have a half circle what what i cut out gave me a half circle that's why it's called a half circle skirt then from the edge after cutting the half circle after cutting the radius i'll mark 16.25 like so so i'll be moving my tape around like so to mark 16.25 like so okay or just be moving your tape around don't stand don't keep your tape at the place and mark 16.25 all around just be moving your tape to each side of the fabric to mark your 16.25 then afterwards you connect them all okay you can use your compass to do this if you can't use your free hand but this is pretty easy to use your free hand to connect okay so after connecting i'll then go and cut that off as well okay so um if you're watching till now and i hope you are this is learn to sew with noni here on this channel i upload sewing tutorials every week okay so if you like the sound of that please consider subscribing to this channel turn on your post notification so that each time i upload a new video you'll be notified okay so um i'm done cutting the flare right so i'm going to transfer this to my main fabric which is the organza so to the organza i'll be adding two inches remember i reduced the length of the flare by two inches for the satin now for the organza i'll be adding it back this is because you need to have uh, the organ the satin is the underlay you don't want it poking out and overshining i'll be outshining the organ pata pata of this outfit which is the organza okay so i've placed the satin on the organza i folded the same way i folded the main fabric i said i folded the main fabric the same way i folded um, my satin okay making sure to place them properly making sure that all the ends and sides are matching up and meeting if it's not please make adjustments and you know make sure that everywhere matches we want to have a, an even dress dress okay we want to have the front we want to have everything to be the same right so when i'm done making all those adjustments remember we added two inches we took out two inches from the satin we're going to add that two inches back to the main fabric all right because we want the satin to be short i keep saying this so from the length of the satin i'm going to be marking two inches all around 
Okay, so that's I'm adding that two inches to the satin to the main um fabric, which is the organza. Okay, so after doing that, I'll connect and cut out the length for the organza. Okay, so I would also cut out the waist. So, okay, so that's it. Everything is the same apart from the length for the organza. Okay, so I've cut out um the, my main fabric. I've transferred the pattern to the main fabric, and you can see I have two pieces of satin for the front. Okay, one will be the underlay for the organza, and one will serve as my lining. So keeping the underlay, I'll now place the organza fabric on it. Okay, making sure that all the edges are matching up, like so. Okay. So the next thing I'll do would be to get the lining piece. Okay, remember I used the satin as lining as well. Okay, because you want to give it that very clean and professional finishing that the ones you buy from the market have. Right, so I'll just place them right sides facing right sides. That means the right side of my satin facing the right side of my ungaza fabric. Then I'll go so round the neckline with half inch seam allowance. Okay, so I'm done doing that. I top stitched and turned it all out okay so i've turned it all out to the front you can see the only thing i did was stitch my neckline and top stitch so i've done the same thing to the other side of the back but i'll be using the remaining side of the back to show you what to do to the back okay what i've done to the front is basically what i did to the back but there's a little bit of twist because the back has your zip allowance okay so i also want to make sure that that part is also clean so you can see my front and one side of the back okay so let me quickly show you how to do the other side right so this is my main fabric this is the underlay so i'll keep the underlay all right then place the main fabric on top of the underlay all right then place the lining piece right sides of the lining piece facing the right sides of the main fabric okay then i'll get my pins and pin it down so that it doesn't move around actually i did the same thing to the front okay because this is organza all right so you don't want it moving around so i'll match them up okay then come in with my pins pin it all the way around it okay just to secure it so it's not moving around so i'll go stitch it half inch around the neckline and afterwards i'll notch i'll make notches okay i'll just show you what i did for the inside for the other side okay after cutting after sewing with half inch you can see my notches okay so you notch and and possibly top stitch then afterwards you know this is how you know just gently gentle nips then afterwards you go and sew the zipper area with half inch okay like so they line turn everything now just the way i did for this side after that you can now turn out everything okay so you have your neckline cleanly finished and the zip uh, zipper area cleanly finished like so so i'll then show you how to attach this because i'll just go to the sewing machine to do this for the other side okay so i just want to show you how to attach join the shoulder so that you have a clean finishing so what you do is place the shoulder right sides facing right sides okay then pull out the lining the lining okay not the underlay the underlay is for the material the main material so you match up the shoulder seam okay where you the shoulder seam like so the part the part that you used in joining the neckline you match them up together okay so you have it's facing each other fabric to fabric lining to lining okay so the organza and the underlay okay for the front and the one side of the back would face each other then the lining piece for the front and the lining piece for the other side of the back would face each other okay so i've pinned it down so i'll go and sew with half inch seam allowance okay so i'll go do those the two together i'll go and clean up the shoulder and also do the sew the other part of the back right so i'm done doing that okay and this is it you can see i've sewn the shoulder area so what i'll do will be to clip off excess seam allowance around that point you know i stitch with half inch okay half inch was my shoulder allowance okay so i'll just cut it off to like quarter of an inch so that you don't have bulkiness at the shoulder area okay so you can see then you can see the inside is cleanly finished like so okay so your stitching is not outside cleanly finished the same for the front so and i've also done the same thing to the other side remember i've shown us how to do it now so i've done the same thing for the other side so your shoulder is cleanly finished all right so the next thing i'll teach us would be on how to 
so the sides so that you also have your clean finishing for the sides okay so i've placed them front and back okay the front pattern facing the back pattern okay so i'll flip it such that i would have fabric to fabric and lining to lining so the fabric and underlay for the front and fabric and underlay for the back i'll hold them separately okay for the left hand side okay so i'll flip it together fabric to fabric okay i'll then go and sew with my 1.5 inches seam allowance i hope you understand okay so i picked if you're working on the left hand side now you pick out the fabric and underlay for the left hand side of the front pattern and also pick the fabric and underlay for the left hand side of the back of one of the back yeah, the back pattern then go and sew with your 1.5 inches seam allowance okay so i've done that you can see so i would also you can see so what i'll do would be to go and do the same thing for the lining match up the lining of the left hand side for the back and the left hand side for the front and also go and stitch with my 1.5 inches seam allowance okay that way you get your clean finishing at the side seam okay so i would i've done this for one side okay so make out make sure that you cut out your excess thread so when i flip in words like this okay so this is for the lining piece okay i will go and sew it down right so afterwards this is what i have okay so you can see i'm talking it all out right now all right so you can see what it looks like this is the front it's cleanly finished after I've, I've sewn the sides then i'll also show you the inside okay so this is how the end seam looks like okay and i've also shown you how to make clean finishing for the armhole but i want to attach um, a sleeve to this i have a tutorial on how to make clean finishing for the armhole of a ball dress i'll link the video in the description box as well so this thing that i've done here i'm going to repeat it to the other side lining to lining okay lining and underlay fitting lining and underlay sorry main fabric and underlay sorry facing main fabric and underlay for the front and the back then lining to lining okay you go and stitch with your allocated seam allowance okay so i'll go to my sewing machine and do that then i'll come back and show you what the inside of my upper body looks like now this is it okay so this is what it looks like you can see it's clearly finished so you just need to come in with your pressing iron and you know do justice to this okay so my garment is coming out well you can see front back zipper area cleanly finished neckline as well okay so you just need to go to your ironing table and give it a very good press okay so this is what it looks like so we'll keep this aside and go work on the flare okay on the lower part right <clears throat> so look at how you look at what you have right so for the lower part i'm going to get um my hard net okay now so for my hard net i you i'm working with half yard of half of hard net so what i did was to divide that into two so half yard is, is 18 so the length i have to divide that into two okay so the length of this is nine inches it means the length of each one hard net for me is nine inches and the length the width is by 60 okay you know whatever you have as the width of your hard net okay that's what you have then the length that i'm working with is nine inches I, i'm working with half yard of hard net now this is my underlay okay for the lower bodies so i'm coming down by two inches okay so i'm just marking two inches from the upper part like so so that is where i would attach my hard net that's where i'll place my hard net before now we used to um pleat the hard net at the waist area okay just achieve fullness but you see that when you are done with that when you pleat your organza or your tool you pleat your underlay your satin you pleat your hard net you pleat your lining at the end of the day you're going to have a, a very big waistline it just making the baby look like a baby masquerade okay so but we don't want that effect we want to achieve a prim and proper look at the waistline still having the ball gown effect okay so that's why i came down by two inches then i'll go 
I wouldn't go and pleat the hard net on the original waistline. I would then go and pleat the, the hard net on the two inches I came down by. Guys, try out this method and, sh and come back and tell me what you experienced. It's, the, the result is amazing. Okay, so I'll go and pleat the hard net around uh, the two inches that I came down by. Then the other hard net, the other one, I also pleat it underneath this other one, okay? So I'm leaving 1.5 inches by the two sides because that's my zip, my zip allowance. And I don't want the hard net to get into the zip allowance, okay? So I've pleated the hard net on the underlay, on the satin, okay? You can see. Then to give it more effect, I also pleated the second one right underneath the other one, okay? To enhance the board effect. So you can see one is slightly higher than the other one. You can see it so it has boosted um the underlay is one is no longer laying flat on my table it has given it a, a form of lift you can see you can see so that's what it's going to give to your dress when you're done so what i'll do is going to get my main fabric and pin it all around the underlay making sure that all the sides and all the points match okay so you can see this when I place it on my, on my table, you can see the bounce, you can see the fluffiness, you can see that's the work of the hardness underneath, okay? So, at, you, you're going to achieve fullness and at the same time, the waistline is not going to be bulky. Now, you need to make sure that your half, your hardness is also two inches away from the underlay okay you don't want it to be poking out from underneath okay so after pinning the front the main fabric to the underlay you go and stitch it all round stitch the waistline together okay so i'll go and do that and come back and show us what i have so after doing that you then pin the upper bodies round the underlay okay so you're going to notch the midpoint of the front and the midpoint the midpoint of the upper bodies and the midpoint of the flare so you go and pin the flare to the upper body so you pin the upper body to the flare then go and stitch with half inch seam allowance okay that's the allocated seam allowance for this right so you can see what we have you can see the outside is looking wavy and bouncy okay so the nest is the inside so you'll be wondering uh -uh, if this child wears this like this the hard net is going to itch or scratch the baby that's why we have lining piece okay so i also cut the lining the same way i had cut the satin the underlay okay so i also cut the lining the same way and with the same length so what i'll do would be to place the lining together and reduce the length of the lining by two inches because you don't want the lining to be see eh, these things are in order okay the main fabric your organza will be longer than the underlay which is the satin now the satin will be longer than the lining okay then the lining will be longer than the hard net okay these are this is the other that it comes with okay this is the other line you need to follow the main fabric is going to be longer than the underlay the underlay will be longer than the lining so i'm reducing the lining by at least 1.1 to 1 inch to 1.5 this is so that it's long enough to cover the hard net because you don't want the hard net to show her at all so it doesn't poke and scratch the body of the child so now what i'll do would be to place my lining okay right so the line doesn't have any left side or the right side so i'm going to pin the lining okay pin it to the seam allowance from the upper part okay pin it to the seam allowance from the upper bodies okay so you go and pin it round from the upper bodies not the lower bodies now from the stitching on the upper body so that when you flip it down it's going to cover the lower bodies you can see the effect we are looking to achieve so i'll go to my sewing machine and go and stitch it down okay i'll go and stitch it all the way around following the same same allowance of half inch that we left now so i'm not stitching that down so you can see what we have very beautiful so it has covered the hard net and at the same time the hard net is in between the lining and the underlay and the underlay is in, it's laying directly on top of the main fabric okay so you're going to pin this is what we have so you're going to fold it together go and first first things first i'll go and overlock the hem okay i'll overlock the hem of the main bodies the satin 
the lining, the hard net, and even the waist seam. Okay, so when I fold it, you can, this is what you will have. Okay, so this is what we are looking to achieve. So I'll just go and do the overlocking and come back and show you what we have. All right, so I'm done overlocking this. Okay, so the next thing I've done is to pin down the the zipper area okay pin it down okay match everything up and pin it down right so remember we are left with one inch initially the same allowance the zip allowance was 1.5 we've turned the upper bodies with half inch so we're left with one inch now from the waistline i'll come down by five inches and that is my zip length okay so from that five inches, I'll now mark so my one inch zip allowance all the way down. Then from the five inches upwards to the upper bodies, I'll attach my zipper to that area. Then I'll go and cut my basic sleeve and attach to this beautiful dress. I also drop the link to the cutting tutorial of the basic sleeve in the description box. Now what I've done next is to um attach my appliques using my b6000 gum okay to fix my appliques to the dress okay so this is how it came out it's super beautiful you can see the aftermath of what we've done here it is super beautiful amazing and uh, all shades beautiful so if you found this video helpful please don't forget to like it don't forget to subscribe to my channel please share this video with your friends you can see even without the mannequin it is standing because of the hard net underneath so you have that full ball gown effect i hope you found this video helpful and i'll see you in my next one for now Bye, I love you.